Uh, can you see just the slide? We have your notes too. Okay. On this. Sorry. Okay. So I can pull the slides up if you like, Chad. Are you happy? Yeah. That looks good. Thank you. That's better. That's perfect. Thank you, Chad. Good luck. Okay. Cool. No problem. Hi, everyone. My name is Chad <laughs> Blevins. Uh, I'm a geographer and a mapper now working on the open data and development team at Critigen, which is a small geospatial company based in Seattle. And I'm here to talk to you about a new project we're starting called Trash Sites. Okay, since the earliest civilizations, there's been trash. Trash management varies throughout the world with many people and places still burning trash piles, which causes major pollution. In contrast, other places have highly sophisticated system of people, trucks, and factories dedicated to moving massive amounts of trash and recyclable material. As populations grow, so does the need for better trash management and maps are a great tool for helping improve the system. The concept behind trash sites is to improve the trash value chain by mapping trash infrastructure sites, both big and small throughout the world. Trash is generally defined as something of little to no value. So to describe trash, you may use terms like rubbish or waste or garbage or refuse. For this example, we're going to use the term trash to refer to items that end up in the landfill or other recyclable materials that may not ultimately end up in the landfill. So have you ever thought about the full value chain of the trash you generate? Where does it come from? Where does it go? And how does it get there? Ending up in a landfill, an incinerator, or a recycling center, or in the worst case, the natural environment. The rate humans are creating, consuming, and disposing of plastic alone is worrisome. And many experts are calling this moment in time the plasticine age. Plastic is breaking down into microscopic particles and ending up in water, sand, sediment, and even animals. And it's actually being embedded into the fossil record of the time that we're living right now. A World Bank report, What a Waste 2.0, estimates that at least a third of the world's annually generated 2 billion tons of municipal waste are not managed in an environmentally friendly manner. 16% of the global population from the highest income countries account for 34% 34, 34 of the municipal waste, ranging globally from some people using about a tenth of a kilo, creating about a tenth of a kilo of trash per day to the higher end of that spectrum of four and a half kilos. So the movement of trash is inherently a geospatial problem as all trash are generated in one place before finally ending up in the stinky bottom of your trash can. Uh, and this is where you hope the magic happens. That's what I like to call it. The magic in our house happens on Friday, which is trash day. I have two young boys who jump and scream with excitement and they hear the roar of the trash truck come down the street. For some reason, I, I can't figure out why kids like trash trucks so much, but they do. Um, this happens twice on Fridays, right? There's one truck that comes down the street that's dedicated to trash. And then, you know, 30 minutes later, another truck comes down the street that's dedicated to recycling. And each one of these trucks carries their load to a different location. Um, just to show an example of the changing trash value chain over the past few years, glass is no longer considered a recyclable product in the town where we live. Glass brings around 10 cents USD per pound versus aluminum, which can bring almost $2 per pound. And sorting and disposing of glass is considered a burden for the recycling industry. Um, mapping trash tri sites is not easy as trash sorting and collection is getting more complicated. Regulations vary per geography, as well as coloring and labeling of collection bins. What can be recycled? How is it recycled? How is it sorted? As you can see in these pictures, glass is not mentioned in any of the categories up above, but it has three dedicated bins down below, one for brown, clear, and green. Now this interest introduces all types of challenges when tagging uh, and mapping trash containers. 
High quality geographic data are critical to analyzing and improving trash management. And here's a common list of tags used in OSM for trashing, uh, ma mapping trash sites. <laughs> you can also use tags in combination to specify the type of waste, who has access, who's responsible or operating um, in the capacity of those containers. Consistent tags do not exist for the many, many informal trash sites throughout the world, such as the one in this picture. As you can see in this example, trash from this site flows directly into the waterway. This is not only a public health concern, but can also become hazardous if trash clogs drain pipes and culverts designed to drain water during heavy rains. The first step in developing a sustainable trash management plan is knowing where the trash originates. HOT has done some amazing work with improving trash management, uh, most notably in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. In a blog posted last year by Aaron Eubank, it says, one of the biggest difficulties in establishing an effective and efficient waste management collection and transportation system in Dar es Salaam is how long it takes to travel to Pugu dump site, the only officially designated solid waste dump in the city and the best route to use. High quality road data is imperative to moving trash, not only having a complete road database, but knowing the surface type, the width, the condition, and other factors such as height limits or bridge capacity. Garbage trucks can weigh over 50,000 pounds. Um, our OSM team at Critigen is working on a tool right now to rate and rank the quality of OSM road data throughout the world. Uh, we've done this in, for cities in the US and we just ran a test for data in DAR and are currently investigating results. Uh, the first pass at looking at those results was actually uh, indicating a lower quality road data than I was expecting for DAR because I've, I've used the data there and it is pretty good. Uh, however, not all of those errors are uh, really going to affect a routing algorithm. You know, if it's like a road and building intersection or something, it's sloppy data, but uh, it still might might work for some routing. But I'm happy to discuss the results with anyone interested in learning more about the way that our team is ranking the quality in, of OSM data around the world. You can also follow us right there, Twitter at OSM quality. Um, and that's it. There's my contact information um, at Critigen and also at Twitter at GeoCruiser. I'd like to thank my boss, Todd Slynn, for letting me work on this project the Critigen OSM team, Monica and Bentley for running the analytics, former Youth Mappers fellow, Elijah Karanja from Nairobi, Chamba Chisala and Trudy Hope from Zambia and Michael Cole from Penn State University who have all been working with me to pilot trash sites projects around the world. So if you're interested in trash mapping or just building quality OSM data as part of the trash infrastructure, you know, please reach out, I'd love to talk more. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Chad. Great presentation and such a cool project. I'll be surely following on social media. Um, 